Thank you very much for having this opportunity to speak on a very, very important occasion, um, which I think is not only an Australian opportunity to advocate for justice and freedom in the world. In a time when we feel there are a lot of features in terms of global interactions, in terms of the health of our common democracy and what we call shared values. I'll speak to three points and I'll reiterate our position under Julian Assange, which has been consistent, principled, and never changing. As an individual, I have enjoyed and benefited from the protection of what I call a special country, Australia. I felt that these particular quality is something that should be enjoyed naturally by everyone, let alone an Australian citizen. And not to even say someone that is being demonized when they are supposed to be celebrated. I want all of you to know that it's not just an Australian cause. Julian Assange is a hero and he is a global hero that should be celebrated. And the likes of people like Nelson Mandela in their own right and all other global advocates for justice and freedom. Yeah. Today, as we celebrate and at the same time advocate for a very, very serious cause, um, it is important to first of all highlight the great things that this man has done. In our continuous effort to engage and to make a world a better place, one of the most challenging things in our time, both as politicians, as individuals, as civil society activists, is the moral courage to speak truth to power. And that is what we do at Amnesty International. Julian Assange, like just so many others, lines in the category of victims of power that consider journalism as a crime. Journalism shouldn't be a crime. It should be what we call the fourth power or the fourth arm of government. That should be the defining aspect of our democracy. Rather than being punished for that, I think we should erect a statue for Julian Assange. I am quite conscious of the fact that I do have three minutes. I wouldn't want to do dishonor to this very, very special advocacy effort. And I wouldn't want to do dishonor to his name. I would call on everyone, advocate to continue in the next six months, because what Julian Assange stands to face is something far more serious than the press tends to get attention. We can speak about this in our communities, in our churches, wherever that we think that the urge for freedom is something that is valued. And I would conclude by emphasizing that the position that we hold is not a personal reflection. The United Nations, which represents the states and the nations of the world, has clearly made a declaration to the effect that keeping Julian Assange is a violation of his human rights. It goes clearly and glaringly against the optional protocol on torture and the treatment that Julian Assange is getting and is most likely to get should he be extradited to the US is going to be inhumane, degrading, and that's not something that Australia stands for. That's not something that the free world stands for. At a time when we face an assault to Ukraine and at a time when we think that we need more powers of good to align causes like this should be something that mobilize the efforts for good. So I would say free Julian Assange and I would once more reiterate our collective will that the present government in its declaration that it wouldn't use megaphone diplomacy. We just want to appeal whatever pressure, whatever patterns or whatever method this government seeks to use. We just want to invoke or reiterate to the government that the release of Assange, having a free man and a good free man is something that's not good just for Australia, 
but it's good for the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>